doesn't apply today. Today's video is brought to you by our brand new GPU Apocalypse 2.0 shirt, kind of immortalizing all of the stuff you love about today's GPUs. Our GPU Apocalypse 1.0 shirt was actually one of our most famous and popular shirts, and now it's re-immortalized with GPU 2.0. But well, let's face it, the Apocalypse never went anywhere. It just evolved, just like this shirt. Go buy it now. You know, they say the best videos I ever make start with the, start with the opening line of, I'm bored. And I was bored this weekend. You guys probably haven't seen these specifically. The last time we did anything with like a high RPM server type fan was back when we were like chopping up carrots with it. Oh my God, it's disappearing as you stick it in there. Here's the crazy part about this. These fans are three times the power, double the CFM as far as I can find online, and twice the RPMs. These are six, 1000 RPM DC brushless. They're technically Delta electronics fans. They are 2.7 amps and 35 watts a piece. And I've been using, but and you see I have the grills on both sides. I don't want my finger to end up as that carrot. <laughs> I was using these on the XOC rig where I was actually using these fans to help cool the VRMs because 1200 watts to those VRMs was a lot and it still didn't stop it from melting a wire. But what's better than two of these Delta fans? eight of these Delta fans. <laughs> so we're gonna kind of test these out in a few different applications today. I think I'm gonna throw them on the Threadripper 360 AIO cooler and kind of do like, it's just a regular like silver Silverstone AIO thing, nothing crazy. Uh, kind of do a regular run with it and then throw these on at full speed, do a run just to see what happens. I think I'm gonna like rig these up to a 5090 Astral <laughs> just to see what happens. <laughs> and then I might throw them as intakes and exhaust in a uh, a system, but yeah, these are kind of nuts. Um, I bought these on Amazon. These really are designed for like server applications. Honestly, they are very noisy. That's why they also don't have very long of a <laughs> of a lead on them. So I was trying to find some CFM numbers on it. Couldn't find anything definitive, but I can tell you right now, these are gonna be pulling nearly 70 watts for per pair. So any of your like regular fan controllers are out. In fact, I even bought some, you know, we'll start the test with where does that controller give up the ghost? So this is the Mugcom cooling <laughs> fan. <laughs> it's like Amazon's just freaking AliExpress these days. I mean, I'm, it's always been the US AliExpress. Oh, these are way smaller than I thought. I was gonna use these to control them, but I don't think these will be able to handle it. So as you can see, I could hook four of them up to it. It's got an actual voltage controller on it and then it uses SATA power, but it's rated 60 watts for the whole thing, which would be plenty for a regular PC fans. Like there would be so much more available wattage to it. Two of these guys exceed that. Four of them definitely exceed that. So I'm kind of curious right now. I want to see like how, where this, see this is perfect for like test stations and stuff where you can just kind of dial up and down the, it's not a piezo, I forget what these are called, but whatever. You can you can dial it up and down. I want to, huh? Hot. Yeah, it's, just, it it's a manual, man. It's the weed. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start with these two because safety first. Here's the problem. I ordered fan grills for these. <laughs> oh God. But I forgot them at home. It's like every July 3rd says, this is the last night someone will spend with all their digits. <laughs> ah, oh, Jesus. It already died. <laughs> Wait, really? Hold on. Okay, I wanna do three, but those will be exposed blades. So let me get my other grills real quick. <laughs> I do have a couple extras, but not enough. Now what I do have so that I can run them all full speed is I just have these splitters. They're Molex splitters uh, that go right to a regular like four pin Molex. So they'll just be straight DC to the power supply, which means no speed control. I just was curious as to whether or not those could handle it. I don't know why I thought these fans were like 15 watt. I was like, oh, it can handle four of them. They're 32 and a half watts, so. Wow, that's a lot of headroom. We're like 50% over its rating. All right, so here's where I think we should start. Uh, let's start with Threadripper, because we already have our initial like temperature testing on that and nothing has changed with the system or the environment. So I'm gonna hook that up real quick. Uh, I'm gonna put these three fans on the AIO. And then we're just gonna run it again with our, uh, I 
think we overclocked it. I don't remember. We'll have to see what those numbers are and then compare against. It's blowing the screws. Oh my God. I have never felt that much air come through a freaking AIO. Eh. <laughs> Where's the smoke machine? <laughs> yeah, that's actually... Wait, one of the fans wasn't even turning. Wait, really? Yeah, this middle one wasn't even going. Okay, so now I have seven fans instead of eight, so I got a bad one. Again, how much did I pay for these stupid fans? And not, how does today's day and age a bad thing slip through? 23 bucks for the fan. Still cheaper than Corsair. <laughs> okay, Eddie. That's, that's actually crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see what all three of them can do now. Look at how much it's affecting. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Oh yeah, look, it's blowing the... <laughs> Wait, right. It's, it's going to be fun when I get them adapted to this. Take these fans out. What? Wow. That's so... Huh? Dude, the pump is not even running. <laughs> and it's still in the 30s. That's crazy. It is differential cooling. Literally is what this is, differential cooling. And it's not climbing. I promise any of you right now, I can't turn it down or overheat. I promise any of you right now, if you unplugged your AIO with your fans going full speed with regular PC fans, it will keep climbing till it thermally shuts off. Now, if I turn this down, we should literally see that temp climb. Look, 38.4, 38.5, 38.6, 38.8. 38.9, 41, 48. Okay, yeah, let's just keep an eye on the temp. Temp to beat is 80 degrees. This is 73. Wow. I know, yeah, 77.1. Let me let it loop a couple times. Oh, there was a 79. Wow, I'm kind of surprised there's no temperature improvement with this much more volume. Like I said, that just means we crossed into the transfer rate limitation rather than the volume of uh, thermal capacity of the air and the AIO and the liquid. There's 84.1, so it's... That's because we're looping and the other tests were single runs. Those Silverstone fans were pretty impressive though with what they were able to do. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now... Here, I'll turn that down. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna see if I can't finagle them onto this guy. But first, we need at least figure out what our max loop temp is on this. So let me just do a run, a loop run real quick on our GPU. And I gotta run the fans at 100% because I'll be running those at 100%, I can tell you that much. This could actually be an interesting test by putting the fans on here because with the, with the Astro fans at 100%, they're pretty loud as you can hear. They move a pretty good amount of volume, uh, but it capped out at 60.2. Now obviously I'll chart this and we'll look at the chart at the end. That could have just been a spike, but 60 degrees under steel nomad load is is pretty impressive, actually. Um, okay, so let's tear this sucker down and see. Uh, no, not update and shut down. That's how you do it. <laughs> so here's the cool thing about the astral card. Um, I can take the shroud with just the fans off and the heatsink part will stay attached to the board. So that's why I'm using this card. It has nothing to do with like, it's just fanboyism or any of that Jeez. crap. I really tied that down <laughs> uh, or any of that crap. It's just literally convenient. Okay. See, that's it. The fans and the RGB and everything is just attached to that directly. I guess what I could do if I really wanted is I could just unbolt all these fans from the frame and then I could try and like mount the fans to the front, but I don't want to scratch it all up or anything. So I decided to just go ahead and remove the fan frame and then I can like gaffer tape the fans to the outside. The zip tie method is really difficult on <laughs> a grill that you can't go all the way through it and then just zip tie it because obviously the PCB is there. So I've never done a full tear down of the cooler like this. It's pretty impressive the way that this thing is. Jeez, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Oh, cool, that works too. <laughs> oh, oh wait. Just undo the fabric tape. There, look at that. It's like it was asking for you to do this. <laughs> it's like it, they went, you know what? Someday Jay's gonna probably wanna hook some 
some crazy delta fans or something to this. Let's make it easier for him to do that. This might be freaking you out. You're like, oh my God, he's taping all over the card. The cool thing about gaffer's tape is it doesn't leave residue. It's the whole point of the gaffer's tape. And we also decided because they have the silver shroud on the end of the cooler, I'm gonna use my silver fan blade protector on the end so we can keep the astral design alive. Here's what's sad is it kind of does at this point. It reminds me of a Noctua collaboration card. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> How to make it a six slot card. The of Republic of the <laughs> This is so stupid. The weight on this thing is like, ugh. It okay. looks like a scale model of an AC unit. It like, is like a window AC. <laughs> uh, I decided to go ahead and safety first again by putting zip ties around the fans just to hold them into the shroud. Okay, let's see what happens. Look at this. It's like it was meant for this. <laughs> How many slots is that? Five? Four? Five, it's really? the whole bottom of the motherboard. <laughs> yeah, so it's like it's all, five slots. Well, you see, that's three. It's at least a six slot. Nice. It's a six slot card. That's actually exactly how they would. Arrow. <laughs> that one still wasn't turning. It really has another bad fan. <sighs> how is this possible? So I think I killed the fans, to be honest. So here's the problem. Their fans, look, they're not keyed. Like the key mark isn't, doesn't align you up properly. See how, see how this black one has the key over to the right, but then that one's just the whole thing's the key. So they had positive, it allows me to misalign positive and negative, or at the very least PM, PWM and positive. So I think that's what killed the other one. And that's probably what just killed that one. Holy moly. <laughs> What's it idling at? Idling at, on air, 26. Time to compare. Ah. It's time to, it's time to compare. Yeah, 56.7 was the max temp on there. You had said it was gonna be like 55. Uh, I need to chart this though over time right now and see. So let me, let me throw this data into a chart real quick and let's see what it looks like, like how much faster it maybe hit the equilibrium, but it's crazy. Like the real, the real video here that I should make eventually is where is that intersect between diminished returns on more airflow doesn't equal better cooling? Because the only way we could get this cooler now would be to cooler, a cooler environment because colder air has more thermal capacity. But then like we showed with the AIO, we'll eventually cross where we have blown more air through the cooler than the actual transfer rate of the cold plate can move the heat from the heat source into the vapor chamber and in, into the environment. That can only happen so quickly. So there comes these intersects that cross and right where they cross is the efficiency point. More than that is overkill and unnecessary in terms of noise and power draw and the fans and all that sort of stuff and airflow and dust. And then anything below that is left headroom. So, uh, okay, let's go ahead and chart this real quick. Okay, let's talk about the time chart because it's kind of like horsepower in a car. Peak horsepower, it doesn't say much. It's about what that horsepower over curve looks like. So the same thing can really be said for these graphs. So if we take a look at temperature here, um, you can see right now with the Astro fans at stock speed, we were kind of hovering right around 60 C, uh, goes over a little bit, goes under a little bit, kind of bounces around depending on the scene. And then obviously with our 18,000 RPM worth of Delta fans, it drops it down uh, to about 57 C. So we dropped about four degrees overall total, which really is a huge diminishing returns at the sacrifice of well, aesthetics, acoustics, and just cost too, because we put 100 watts, almost 100 watts worth of fans on there and spent $75 worth of fans, which is a kind of a bad deal. Uh, but let's take a look at memory. Memory really shows the same sort of thing. Uh, obviously it's down about 5C over the, uh, the, the stock fans. Uh, the memory temp on the stock fans is great. There's no re like, th there's nothing to be concerned with. So dropping the memory temperature with these fans is just, it makes sense because the memory is touching the, the same vapor chamber cooler as the whole, the whole copper plate design with Astral. So obviously as that cooler is cooler, so will any component touching it. So one thing I wasn't able to see on here that I didn't map would be VRM temps. I'm sure VRM temps would probably have uh, improved as well. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and talk about the frequencies now. So if we look at the frequency curve, because I didn't do the static steam, uh, scene in Steel Nomad, I let it loop. You can see instead of being a more of a solid line, it's definitely fluctuating around. The pink line, which represents the Delta fans, is obviously higher than the blue line, but it's only higher by about one boost bin. 
So although this was a fun experiment, it definitely shows where those diminishing returns, uh, what those diminishing returns look like in an extreme scale. Like it would be a really interesting test right now to kind of like change those RPMs, maybe every 500. So do 6,000, 5,500, 5,000, 4,500, and then find where that intersect is. Cause that would be really curious to see. But what we're kind of discovering right now, at least on the astral cooler, is those stock fans, which are only 15 mil thick and about 110 millimeters, are pretty damn good. They actually are keeping that cooler pretty close to where that diminishing return is already. I mean, for us to go from those fans to 6,000 RPM server grade fans and only drop 4C really says a lot for the cooler. This wasn't intended to be a, hey, how good is this cooler design? It's just, I had to think of a component that could generate a lot of heat and nothing else in here generates as much heat as the uh, as the Astral. Technically the Threadripper does. It also pulls about 600 watts under full load. Um, when we are uh, pushing that PBO overclock to level five, but that's that's kind of crazy uh, that I thought for sure we'd get better results than that. So I'm not gonna throw them all into a chassis uh, because I don't have the grills for safety reasons and I killed two of them because of the... Why is there even a key on there if you can slide it left and right? What's the point? The whole point of the key is to keep everything lined up, not put your positive to your negative, which is we looked at the... We looked at the schematic, the little markings obviously on the four pin, cause I don't have them memorized. Uh, and yeah, off by one where I was, basically pushed 12 volt down ground, which would also mean we pushed 12 volt through PWM cause it was all over by one. So we, we I killed the fans, two of them. $50 lesson learned right there. All right, there we go. Uh, I guess you can also learn your lesson. Don't stick server fans on things that don't need it. Servers do obviously, but they have a lot of static pressure to push through on a blade design, like a 4U blade. It's got a lot of resistance and you need a ton of, of static pressure and airflow. All right, guys, there you go. I was bored today and I want to see what would happen. And this video cost me a good chunk of money because I bought six of those fans, plus I bought three of those fan controllers and several packs of those, those splitters. So I, I'm probably a couple hundred bucks into this video. So that's like what, two Corsair fans? Not even a starter pack <laughs> for like the freaking Link stuff. 